Paula. Thank you, Deputy Speaker. And I rise to, uh, to wear the badge that I've been retrospectively branded with this week as a radical activist. If a radical activist is someone who will stand up for their community, who is someone who will organise with others in their community to stand up for the environment and to stand up for their community, then that's what I am. I'm a radical activist, Deputy Speaker. Those opposite have not been shy this week in suggesting and labelling people who care about the environment and labelling people who are prepared to make a contribution in causes around the environment. So I welcome the opportunity to make a contribution on the Environmental Protection and Biodiversity Conservation Amendment. What we've seen could be described as lively debate, but that implies being fleet of foot or mind, and I would argue that those opposite have been neither. The debate, rather, has been marked by a sledgehammer approach. We've had conflated rhetoric, people being accused of being vigilantes, vandals, saboteurs, of people gaming a system, gaming a system. Going to the federal court is now gaming the system, Deputy Speaker. And this is a really important debate because it gives us an opportunity to lay out what the changes before us actually are and what has brought them before us. So we're talking about the Environmental Protection and Biodiversity Conservation Act of 1999, and as has been pointed out by many in this debate, the EPBC Act has been in operation for some 15 years and was introduced by Prime Minister John Howard. And it provides a legal framework to protect and manage nationally and internationally important flora, fauna, ecological communities and heritage places defined in the Act as matters of national environmental significance. As someone who represents an electorate with a Ramsar site in the electorate, I stand here proudly to say that this piece of legislation is critically important and should not be amended as suggested. This amendment seeks to repeal section 487 will remove the ability of third parties to take action under the Act and will only allow persons who can meet the standing test in the Administrative Decisions Judicial Review Act. What does this mean, Deputy Speaker, in real terms? What does it mean to the people in my community? Currently, this law allows very specific groups and people to challenge an approval given by government where the processes have not been followed to the letter of the law where an approval has been granted without meeting the requirements of the Act. What generally happens when the appeal is lodged, the parties involved withdraw the approval and revisit the process until they can guarantee that it is legal. What this amendment does is remove specific people's ability to do that. Currently, legal challenges are limited to community groups who have been active for at least two years. This amendment would mean the challenges would be limited to people who can prove they are directly affected. In real terms, prove they are directly affected, have the funds and the courage to risk a massive costs order against them. Deputy Speaker. What it means is that the errors in the approval process would go unchallenged would go unchallenged. The Act as it stands means that errors don't go unchallenged, that people are careful in deliberating on the approval processes, that environmental concerns are addressed appropriately, that mitigating decisions are taken to ensure environmental protection. But here we are in the federal parliament looking to undo that process. And let's have a look at the context. We're here because Minister Hunt made a mistake. Now, grown-ups generally, if they make a mistake, they own it, they act to ameliorate the damage and they move on. But no, no, what we've seen from Minister Hunt is a throwing the toys out of the cot. 
he's had a huge dummy spit because he got something wrong. Now, Deputy Speaker, I would have thought that grown-up governments require grown-up ministers, not toddler tantrums like we've seen here. And as a result, those opposite have opened up a new front in the Abbott government's war on everything fair. This time, it's environmentalists under attack. Deputy Speaker, in reality, the EPBC, as it stands, delivers attention to detail, sensible compromise, negotiated outcomes. Reason is what this Act delivers. But what we've seen this week is speech after speech of scalding rhetoric. And Deputy Speaker, I have found, listening to the speeches from those opposite across the last 48 hours, personally affronting. Because, Deputy Speaker, I led a community campaign. I was chairperson of the Werribee Residents Against a Toxic Dump, Deputy Speaker. This was a group of people concerned about the environmental impacts of a project that had the support of the Premier of the day, Jeff Kennett, and was being purported by a huge company. CSR was the company, Deputy Speaker. Now, in leading that campaign, I worked with a group of incredibly sensitive, reasonable people. A farmer, Deputy Speaker, as it happened. A farmer who was concerned, very concerned, about the damage to the reputation of the Werribee South growers and their produce. I worked with a suburban solicitor, a suburban solicitor who was concerned, concerned about the fact that the people's voices were not being heard, that the processes were pitched against the community. I worked with an academic. I, of course, was a school teacher. We had a scientist on our committee. In fact, we had two scientists on our committee. Deputy Speaker, the changes that are being suggested today and the rhetoric that has been piled on this week has vilified people who have clear community concerns, vilified people, pigeonholed people from my community as wildly let me think, mung bean eating vandals was one of the quotes yesterday. Well, Deputy Speaker, a few people in my committee may have eaten mung beans in their day, but I haven't. These people were concerned about potential damage, real damage, to the groundwater that's used to water the crops in Werribee South. And that group of people were prepared to take whatever action was required. That included, Deputy Speaker, a trip to Canberra to see if, given the dangers to the Ramsar wetland, the federal government were interested in our cause. Deputy Speaker, I find it offensive, and I know that all of those people in my community who were involved in that campaign will have found it equally offensive to have heard concerned citizens typecast in this way. We were residents, we were farmers, we were people critically concerned about our community and about our environment. And we did all the evil things being ranted about. We took action, we took every action we could to ensure our voices were heard. We were on the consultative committees, we did seek what legal avenues were open to us. We worked closely with the Geelong Environment Defenders Office. We sought legal advice from that group. We sought their expertise. And what we're talking about today is taking away communities' rights to seek explicit expertise in environmental matters if they've got a problem with a proposal in their area. What we've heard is 
lots of rhetoric about you should be in the immediate vicinity. We've heard lots of rhetoric about people taking action from thousands of miles away. This act is exactly what this country needs to ensure that people thousands of miles away can express their concerns and can seek redress and can be involved in the process and can ensure that the approval process ticks every box under the Act. So there is no doubt, no doubt in my mind, Deputy Speaker, that this is in fact another war for this government, someone else to pick a fight with. And the rhetoric, the overblown rhetoric, really reflects the camouflage of the fact that they want to change something that was introduced under the Howard government, something that has worked for 15 years and a speaker after speaker has said has resulted in one project being stopped. But the fact that these things in the law stand there ensure that those involved in the process make sure their due diligence is done appropriately. They make sure that the approval process has followed the law. That's what's important here, Deputy Speaker. So to those people from the Mackay Conservation Group, the grassroots community-based organisation from North Queensland, run by a group of dedicated volunteers, to you I say, keep up the good work. And to you I say, if you need expert advice from the New South Wales Environmental Defender's Office, then seek it, because it only reflects the same work that I did as a concerned citizen of my community some years ago. Deputy Speaker, history shows the EPBC Act as it stands ensures processes are followed. It ensures community voices are heard. It ensures approvals are not corrupted. This is dangerous legislation, Deputy Speaker. It seeks to circumvent natural justice and disempower the public of Australia. It seeks to silence communities when they're critically concerned and critically involved. In fact, Deputy Speaker, I would go further and say that it will limit community involvement. Community activism is a good thing, not a bad thing. Having people informed and involved in the debates of our major projects ensure that the community goes with a project when it gets ultimate approval. Deputy Speaker, I suggest strongly in this place that those opposite rethink this mad war on environmentalists. <laughs>